Um, so I'm going to take us back to our dialogue and our response on the national dialogue at this time. Um, and the next thing we had on our agenda there was the WSB Equity and Disparity Work Group, uh, which was spoke to, spoken to by a few other commenters. That's on page 89. Uh, I'm just going to very quickly narrate uh, my memo. I wrote a memo to the board on this. I want to thank former Governor Cherry and former Governor Doan for keeping me on point on these issues. I'm going to give credit to former Governor Cherry for, for a great idea he came up with. He said to me, you know, we're having this debate and this national struggle. Lawyers, what can we do as lawyers and inside inside the rules that confine us? Oh, what we're supposed to do. And, and good muting. And uh, Lawyers do analysis. Lawyers look at rules and lawyers look at systems. And this is a great task for us to do. Rather than just talking about what institutional barriers there are, let's go and look for them, find them, and address them if they're there or how they're there. And that means our own rules, are not just the laws of the land, but the rules that govern the practice of law. Uh, I think this is a great task. And I think more importantly, this is, again, I want to give Governor Cherry some credit here, we should be reaching out to all the potential stakeholders who these institutional biases they may be facing. I read earlier today a long list of people that we've heard uh, comments from on this matter. Um, and we have a list on our website of you know official outside private bar partners that we work with to get ideas. And as you heard diversity committee says, these are some of the people with the best ears on the ground and access to the populations and, and the practices that face these barriers. I'd like to make this a big tent project. Um, I'd like to get um, all the people I've listed here, civil rights section, Committee on Professional Ethics, uh, Court Rules Procedures Committee, Access to Justice Board, Practice of Law Board, and the 14 uh, bars that I've listed here. Uh, they're also on our website. It might be a large body, but I think that's this is a time for that. This is a time for conversations. Um, this is a time to start a process. It's not going to be an immediate overnight thing. I think this is going to have to be a deliberate stakeholder, uh, thoughtful process and examination of issues. Um, and I think it'll, it'll be something uh, redeeming and productive that we can do as an appropriate thing for us to do as a state bar. Governors. President Lee Jimdar, are you looking for a motion to approve? And whatever the board wants to do with the idea of throwing in front of them. Yes, Governor Kiketi. I would, I would move to approve the uh, establishment of the Equity and Disparity Work Group. I'll second that. Thank you. That was Peterson? Yep. Further discussion? Not seeing any. I'll proceed to a roll call vote. Governor Abel? Aye. Governor Angelville? Aye. Governor Clark? Aye. Governor Grubicki? The Wizard of the East, Governor Grubicki? Governor Higginson? Stain. Governor Knight? Aye. Governor McBride? Aye. Governor Peterson? I do. Governor Shiketti? Aye. Governor Stephen? Aye. Governor Swagel? Aye. Governor Tollefson? Abstain. Nine votes in favor, two abstentions, none against. Uh, the motion carries. Um, we will take steps to convene this task force. Thank you so much, board. I think this is important work that we can help in. President, Governor-elect Brent Williams-Ruth, do you have a follow-up comment? President, I would just like to, uh, I was reading through your proposal and the, and the makeup of the list, and it says five at-large delegates, and 
I don't know if you're planning on including anyone from the elect class to be in that or not, but I would, as, as a member of that class, not necessarily saying I'd like to be on that, I would like that to be considered, please. Thank you. My intention is that this will advise the Board of Governors over the next two years, and you will be on that board over the next two years. So I'll have to think about that. But thank you so much for that uh, offer. Okay, great. Yeah, governor, I, I, I think as a uh, departing governor, I, I won't necessarily be on that. So. Well, actually, that's Governor great. Stevens, since you won't be on the board, <laughs> uh, I don't know. That, that might actually make a more logical fit to me. Uh, than someone coming on to the board. But let's, uh, well, I look forward to discussing all that and, and figuring this out. Thank you all so much. Okay, after that, we have a resolution of the WSBA in regards to the Rule 6 program and its role in providing an additional pathway to justice for underrepresented communities. That's on page 92 of our materials. You'll also recall that this morning we just gave a Local Hero Award to a fantastic lawyer who came up through the Rule Six program. I've made my own comments before about the fantastic quality. Uh, anyone who's come through the Rule Six program, as far as an opposing counsel that I've had, I've had wonderful experiences. Um, this is Governor Abel. Will you speak to this matter? I hadn't anticipated speaking oh, okay. on this matter. No. Sorry. You know, I I had the the proposal came from. Uh, uh, Governor Clark e. Bell and Law Clerk Board Chair Philobom. Is Chair Philobom here by chance? No, he's not. Okay. I don't think. That's all right. The resolution's on page 92, and I think maybe just be appropriate if I read it into the record. Would that be all right with everyone? Thank you. In fact, let me put it up in my let me put it up on my other screen. I have three screens going just so I can keep track of all this uh, business. Mr. President. Mr. Yes. President, this is this is Hunter. If you'd like, I would be glad to speak to this briefly. I just hadn't anticipated doing so, uh, but I did have. I was one of the cooks in the kitchen on this, so I'd be glad to talk about it. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you, Governor Abel. Yeah, sure. So, as you can see on page ninety-two of the materials, um, we have proposed for the board's consideration a resolution um, reaffirming this body's uh, belief in the importance and the utility of the APR six law clerk program. Um, we think it's appropriate now for a number of different reasons, um, but one of them is, is of course, the unique role that the Law Clerk Program plays in addressing access to justice issues and providing an alternative um, method for uh, individuals to become licensed in this state. We think the resolution is fairly straightforward. I'm glad to answer any questions that anyone may have, uh, but I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Governor McBride. Thank you, Mr. President. So uh, I'm supportive of this resolution. I guess more in way of a comment, um, I was not uh, a vote in support of the diploma status that the Supreme Court decided by order. But I do find it a little uncomfortable that um, when a Rule 6 sits for a bar exam along with a graduate from an ABA accredited law school, they're in the same status. They both pass under the same status. And I'm a little uncomfortable they were left out, and I know the court has said we had to draw lines and we left them out, but I did want to put the my fellow governors on notice that I've encouraged, uh, I know a couple, uh, Rule 6, both who have made it and who are pending, and I've encouraged them to contact the Supreme Court directly and, and play up that issue. Absent some information that they fail the bar exam at some greater rate um, than uh, graduates from law schools, I'm just not sure how we drew that line appropriately. And I'm a big fan of the Rule 6 program. They're usually great stories. Um, and so I just wanted to put the board on notice that I'm not trying to go around the Board of Governors, but I feel like this is something that the courts are doing it and, and my advocacy is better directed at the justices. Well, Governor McBride, are you suggesting we add a line? Well, I jump in at the last minute and do that. It's uh, I had brought this issue up before and I felt like it is the court. If the board wants to add that line, I do actually don't understand why uh, Rule 6s are left out uh, of the action the Supreme Court took. Um, so maybe there's some history there I'm not aware of. Let's discuss it some more. Governor Stevens? Yes. Uh, I had a, in fact, I had a question for, uh, and I think it's Jean, but it may might be Tara or somebody. Um, do we know um, for... Uh, 
what would have been the July and September bar exam, how many rule six uh, people were applicants? Go ahead, Jean. Yes, there are 11. Okay, so, um, and I, I, I just, just wanted to have that. I just wanted to understand that because, you know, I'm, I'm thinking with government, Governor McBride now that uh, uh, I, I don't know how the 11 kind of either break the bank or um, uh, or are, are too many to have included as as well. So um, I would support having some comment to that to that effect. Just as a point of information, because I've been included on the discussion that's actually later in our agenda, uh, under our current refund policy, they wouldn't be getting refunds at this point anyways, even if they opted for a diploma privilege as opposed to taking the exam. Any other comments? Well, well, Questions or proposed language comment. or amendments? Comment. Uh, past President Pickett. Yeah, I just... First, I want to say I've got a Rule 6 working for me, um, so I want to make that full disclosure. I'm a, also, I want to say I'm a huge fan of and supporter of the program because it produces working lawyers who have a deep understanding of what it means to sit down with people firsthand and actually work through legal issues. And that's not something that all law students get. And I don't mean that to be demeaning of law students. I myself, I'm a graduate of an ABA accredited school set for the bar. But in terms of these rule six professionals who are going to join our ranks, I see no uh, reasonable explanation to exclude them, to single them out as being somehow less deserving of this this privilege than an ABA graduate uh, period. And so I would be uh, in, in support of trying to uh, bring some equality to this equation and making sure that they are also afforded those same privileges uh, so that they can move forward in practicing law. I think they're a great and invaluable addition uh, to our profession. And I would hope that we could do something, anything uh, to support this and make sure there's equality. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Governor Clark. Well, I, I just wanted to let, let you all know, I think you, you most do know, but I'm actually a uh, I, I've had the honor for three years to be the uh, okay the um okay the um okay the um um okay the um okay the um okay the um liaison okay with this group and it, it, it's really it, it's really been awesome and um, about seven or so months ago I, 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 I did a I, 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 I'm actually a uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, a mentor for one right now, so thank you. There's a TV show. Everyone loves Dobie Gillis. Maybe we should make a new version. Everyone loves the Rule Six program. Um, I hear some sentiment about making a statement. Um, someone wants to make a motion to amend to that effect, that would be great. If someone wants to make a motion to leave Mr. it to President. my discretion to make my best argument, Governor A. Bell. Yeah, yeah a, a quick item here. So just like Tom said, to me, it was a little bit of a head scratcher as to why the court drew the line that it did, but that's obviously the court's discretion. That's the authority it has. My job is to you know, sit up and salute. Um, but I wonder, to the extent that you feel comfortable, are you able to kind of educate the board about some of the, um, the discussions that have taken place on this? Um, I'm wondering if that might help provide a little bit more kind of clarity and insight. I don't want to put you in a bad spot, but I'm no, just wondering. not at all. Want. Not at all. I, I feel like I have cultivated a very frank um, and open relationship with the court. I feel like they've uh, been uh, frank and clear with me uh, out of out of respect. Uh, and I feel like I've been able to be frank and clear with them out of respect. I wouldn't have any burden carrying this message uh, to them. Uh, this is this is how it went. Okay. This board 
had a discussion on this issue. We voted 12 to 1 to oppose uh, the diploma privilege as, as, a, um, as a, uh, recommended. Uh, the court agreed with that position. They voted 6 to 3 to also adopt that position. But instead, they took a different approach. Let's make sure the bar exam is safe. Let's make sure it's distributed across the state. Let's lower the level of stress and danger uh, to the students. Uh, after those events, what brings us to our discussion on the national discourse uh, and, and is the same thing that brought the court to their new vote on the matter. Uh, as many of us know here in Washington, that we've become the center of national attention due to CHOP or CHAZ in, this, in the Capitol Hill neighborhood, which is the neighborhood that Seattle U, U Law School is in. Uh, there have been uh, the use of... Um, uh, slightly less than uh, lethal uh, um, uh, law enforcement tactics there, uh, uh, tear gas. Um, there has been general uh, 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 civil disorder, but also a continued um, large population presence in that same neighborhood as SU Law School. The entire SU faculty unanimously voted uh, to communicate to the court. That was done on a Wednesday. It was I don't know when it was done. It was transmitted to the court on a Wednesday. Um, the court, the Friday, had its normal normative meeting. I don't think any of the court anticipated changing their mind, uh, probably as, as far as, as even as Thursday. And then on that Friday, they voted 7-2 to two in light of the considerations uh, of what's going on in our nation, uh, the civil disorder, um, the concerns of the faculty, uh, to extend diploma privilege. And they had a fairly elaborate and long debate about that as well. They worried about a lot of things, angled a lot of things. Uh, they very specifically intentionally limited it to ABA accredited law schools anywhere in the country. And they specifically definitely limited it to people who are registered for our bar exam. Chief McElroy could tell you, we've been getting letters from all over the country, people who had even no intention of taking the Washington State bar exam saying, hey, I didn't sign up for it. <laughs> but I demand to be let in. It's a matter of you know equal protection or all kinds of all kinds of things they might be saying. Um, uh, there's all kinds of people. There, there's some other issues. We the WSBA told um, students that they could either take they could transfer to the September exam or we said they could transfer to the February exam. But the court also I think very deliberately uh, considered that and they included only the September and uh, July exams. You know and that's hard for the students who were signed up for the February exam saying hey I was trying to be safe. I was trying to be protective of the coronavirus. I live with vulnerable parents. Um, but, you know, part of the court's calculation might be that, well, the civil disorder is happening now. And that's the thing That's the thing the court is addressing right now uh, and those stresses that are on the students. And maybe they don't think it's going to still be a problem by February. And that's where the dice have laid on this point. I've talked to the chief justice. Um, I've talked to members of the court. My impression is the court's going to live with the decision it's made. Um, but, you know, I think if the Bar Association brought forward a statement, the conversation is never closed as far as administrative matters go. Uh, Governor McBride? Well, yeah, I'd be happy to make that motion. I'm just a little uncomfortable when a committee worked on this, a chair worked on it, Governor Abell worked on it. I don't want to, I want to jump in and try to put this on to that unless everybody wants to do that. Uh, I was just trying to give notice that I, I think we should pursue it with the court, whether it's as an amendment to this motion or whether it's in communication through you, Mr. President. Um, sure. I guess. And um, I'll let you know that later on in the agenda, the Rule 6 Board is coming to us for permission to express themselves to the Supreme Court. And another option would be for us to, to join their message. Governor Stevens? Yes. I, you know, I, and, and, I, I can go either way, uh, adding this on, but I think it is, it is timely. And, um, while it's nice to say all these nice things, um, I think it's better to also be in, be in integrity when we do. And I think being in integrity is to say, look, if you're, if you're taking a look at, uh, those, those who signed up for the bar from ABA accredited law schools, and we have 11 people who have, uh, taken a different and arduous path and signed up as well, um, they too should be included as a part of the group that only signed up for the July and February bar exam. And it's, and it's, it's, it's more than, than um, 
laudatory, it's also tangible in terms of the support we want to give them. By the way, because I have a lot of things I'm juggling in my head all the time, and you know, we should never get too confident. When I'm writing an article uh, for the WSBA blog right now. It talks about lawyers thinking of themselves as experts in all things because we do become experts in things, but not all things. Uh, Chief McElroy, have I misstated anything uh, during all my blabbing? No, you stated it exactly correctly. As far as um, we were aware, the, once the letter went to the court, the court was considering diploma privilege for all people registered for the July and, and September exams. So, um, yeah, the, the division was decided by the court. I do want to add, however, under the rules, there is also one other group, and there is a letter in the materials from Dean Mario Barnes from the University of Washington Law School, and that is the group of students who um, have either a non-ABA JD degree and an LLM for the practice of law, which they've earned from an ABA accredited law school, or who are licensed to practice law in a foreign country, sometimes after many more years of study than are required in the United States, um, and also have an LLM for the practice of law from an ABA accredited law school. Um, I'd probably be remiss if I didn't add the fact that they also were not included in the diploma privilege order. And I can articulate one more point on that. And the, and the basis, and I've talked to the LLM students and have conveyed their uh, letters to the court as well. Um, you know, one of the issue for them is um, a lot of them are on student visas and those student visas expire without employment or actually they expire six months after uh, graduation. And a lot of them were counting on the bar exam and passing it so they could get employment and, and stay in the country. That's one of the issues they're facing. And that's one of the things the material, and we are gonna discuss the diploma privilege in general. Governor Knight. Uh, thank, thank you, you Rajiv. Uh, you know, I think one of the, we were all surprised by the court's uh, order on this issue of diploma privilege, but it is the order of the court. And, um, you know, in having a united front, I think we, we stand by it and help implement it. Um, in looking at how they came to that decision, it strikes me that one of the main things might have been the pass rate. Um, in other states that have uh, offered diploma privilege right now, like Utah, there was a threshold of graduating from a school with certain pass rates for the bar exam in prior years. And there's a huge divide between law school graduate pass rates of the bar exam and both Rule 6 and uh, LLM students. Uh, in 2019, the law school graduate was 73%. APR6 was 50% and LLM was 19%. So if we're talking about trying to not license people that couldn't pass the bar exam, you know, you've got a majority they're going to pass from law schools and you don't have a majority in either of the other categories. So, um, you know, I know this discussion will have nuanced issues to it, but um, in, in terms of one of the components of protecting the public, um, I think looking at historical pass rates is some, to some degree relevant, uh, and I'd encourage us to keep that in mind in considering, you know, what, how we want to express our desire that the court change anything. Thanks. And, and I do believe the court had considered pass rate in regards to the LLMs. I think they didn't discuss the issue of the APR6. Governor Abel. Thank you, Rajiv. So just, just a couple of items. As I think most of you know, and as I had articulated previously, I was a strong opponent of um, diploma privilege, but we are there now. And um, in thinking about it and in speaking with uh, both Dan and um, Chair Philobom uh, over the last couple of weeks, I do think that this is an area where if there is a desire and a hunger by the board to weigh in on this, to expand the court's decision on diploma privilege to include the clerks, I actually think that's a good idea. And I think it's that way for a number of reasons. You know, one, um, this program has a history of turning out strong, highly qualified attorneys. Um, two, I think there is not a distinction that, that I have seen or been persuaded as to why this decision would not encompass the 
um, the Rule 6 uh, law clerks. Um, I thought Russell's comments were, were interesting. That might be the distinguishing point. I, I just haven't heard that yet. Um, and then three, I think there's a similar um, issue for us to keep in mind is that with regard to the LLMs or other categories of potential individuals who may or may not be covered by this order, they have other kind of stakeholders advocating for them. So for instance, it's already been mentioned that Dean Barnes has been talking about the LLM students. This program is our program. <laughs> well, this is something that we have had you know, a responsibility for for you know, a long time. And if we don't do, uh, if we don't advocate for them, frankly, nobody is. So um, speaking solely for myself, maybe Dan Clark will tell me I'm all washed up or Ben Philibom or somebody will tell me I'm all washed up, but I am going to propose some language uh, to this resolution. Um, and I would move that we add the following. As a second to the last paragraph, so just before the final paragraph, I propose that we add the following language, quote, be it further resolved that the Board of Governors respectfully encourages the Washington Supreme Court to amend the order granting diploma privilege and temporarily modifying admission and practice rules dated June 12, 2020, to include qualified graduates of the program, end quote. So the big point there is... Here, second from Director Stevens. Director Neverett, were you able to capture that? I was not. I was going to ask Governor Abel if he could email it to me. That would be great. Glad to. So there is a motion and a second on the table to amend the uh, resolution. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll pursue to a roll, proceed to a roll call vote. Governor Abel? Aye. Governor Angelo? Aye. Governor Clark? Aye. Governor Grabicki? Aye. Governor Higginson? Aye. Governor Knight? Aye. Governor McBride? Aye. Governor Peterson? Yes. Governor Shaketti? Aye. Governor Stevens? Aye. Governor Swagel? Aye. Governor Tollefson? Aye. Uh, the motion to amend carries. Now we have the original question. Is there any further discussion on the original resolution as amended? Not seeing any. I move to a roll call vote. Governor Abel? Aye. Governor Angelville? Aye. Governor Clark? Aye. Governor Gerbicki? Aye. Governor Higginson? Aye. Governor Knight? Aye. Governor McBride? Aye. Governor Peterson? Yes. Governor Shiketti? Aye. Governor Steven? Aye. Governor Swagel? Aye. Governor Tollefson? Aye. 12 votes in favor, none against. The motion carries a resolution as amended. I will carry it forward swiftly to the Supreme Court. And we're going to have more discussion on diploma privilege later today.